Hi everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and this is another game from the 2021 League that I'm playing in. And in this game we're using the action tokens. They are one-time use dice for the free people, and one gives you a card draw and one lets you muster a nation toward war. So I'm playing free people, and my opponent is obviously playing shadow, and this is how it starts. I've already drawn cards, and my opponent allocates zero eyes and rolls one, but only gets one muster. So I managed to get a fairly balanced roll, two movement, perfectly fine with that. And my opponent starts by drawing a card, and I, th I think that's a great choice. If you're not sure, if, you, if, if, if there's not a card that you're going to play, then it's good to it's good to draw first. And in this case there were no playable cards. So that's a that's a pretty straightforward choice. Alright, so card draw and then a muster of oh sorry, moving armies. And when I see moving these two units from Nern into Gorgoroth, I think, okay, probably we're gonna muster up and go towards Gondor. And I think that's reasonable if if you want to. I also think in a situation where as Shadow, I had relatively low muster count, but a good amount of army movement. I might take that opportunity to go north because that will let me next turn muster Sauron to war and and I can still make good use of the army movements. Now, to be fair, I can do plenty of good army movements uh, around Mordor too. Um, so maybe that's just a, a preference of where you want to attack first. I find that you know, if I'm attacking into Gondor, I probably want these units in here too. And if I'm light on musters, then that may be a little bit more difficult to get early in the game. So I don't know. It's it's a tough call, but I would I I, I just tend towards the north if, when I see low musters and high movement. All right. Obviously, I'm moving the fellowship, and they're safe. And then this is a good configuration of armies. They're they're ready to go. And I decide to move again, makes sense, again safe, with only one eye, odds are good that I'm going to be safe both times. And then Isengard gets mustered toward war, I go ahead and move Gondor toward war. And I don't know, elves are always a good choice. Um, it looks like my opponent's coming toward Gondor, so I want to be ready when the attack comes into Asgiliath that I can then use the next action die to muster an elite into Minas Tirith. So that's why it's useful to have Gondor one away from war. I don't think I have any cards that particularly favor one or the other. Yeah, I guess I have, I have power too great, so maybe I'm, I don't know exactly what's going on there. Does it make sense to start moving elves towards war if you have power too great? Maybe that makes sense. I kind of wish that he goes towards the elves because power too great is going to help me keep them safe. But I think if you muster, maybe by muster, it's tricky because if you muster Gondor, then on one hand, it makes Minas Tirith a less appetizing target because it's likely there's going to be another elite in here. But on the other hand, it makes it a little. It makes Gondor a little bit more likely of a target because it's a way to get a free people's nation to war quickly, and thus the Witch King can get into play. So I really don't know about that. If you have comments on what what would you do with that muster? Would you start the elves toward war, or would you start Gondor toward toward war? I'd be curious to know. All right, and then this is an interesting army movement. I guess we're Shadow is staying out of the. Uh, range of Faramir at the moment and it really to me this is looking a lot like a Gondor attack so I decide to use this um, army movement to put this one unit here in North Athelion to sort of block this army from from moving in because remember uh, Sauron isn't at war so they can't actually attack into this right now and um I don't know. Maybe that's just a waste of time. Maybe it'd be better to get this regular into Erebor, but to me, it felt like Gondor was Gondor was being attacked. So it just sort of disrupts some of these plans. I'd be curious to know what what my opponent was planning on doing. Um, they end up then heading up north and leaving one unit behind. So at the very least, this one unit 
took out one unit from this north that's now tra this this uh, army that's now traveling north okay um but maybe now that this army is going north uh maybe i want this dwarf in here all right so that's that's how that first round played out and then i'm seeing i have um Great. I had Gray Company from the beginning, so I'm thinking, ooh, maybe I can get Strider down there. And I just do. I just drew Gua here, so maybe I can get Aragorn um, down there without uh, three more movements. Or I don't know if I make it past Moria, then I can get get um, Strider right to Minas Tirith. Especially if these armies aren't going, aren't actually attacking into Gondor, then it's safer to put Aragorn into Minas Tirith. All right. So let's see what I get. So one I allocated, one I rolled, and then I got two Wills of the West. So obviously those are great to roll early in the game before there's any risk of Day Without Dawn. I'm thinking, oh, there's a chance I can get Gandalf right here. And I pass. And I wonder, you know, on one hand, sure, as free, you want, you want to pass. Um, but on the other hand, maybe... It's better to move if you know for sure that you're going to move. I don't know what, 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 um, so Saruman comes into play here. Yeah, this is, this is a little bit of an interesting sequence. So once Saruman appears, I, I think probably the pass, the pass makes some sense there. Um, and now once Saruman appears, now, now I'm really thinking, okay, I, I definitely can get Gandalf. Um, and if I move, Right now, I can find out if I get hit, but for some reason, I I decide to mm, do something. I use the the muster action token to to muster the north, and I guess I'm thinking, all right, maybe I can get them to war before this army arrives because I know that. Um, I know that Eisen, I mean, I know that Sauron isn't at war and there are no more musters. And I also have Wisdom of Elrond. So I can, that's one muster. I can use this actual muster for one. I can use this Palantir for one. I can move once and still muster them at the start of next turn before before this army can, can reach here. So, okay, I guess that makes sense. Um, but I think it, it probably makes more sense to move because what's happening here is the Palantir of Orthanc. So I don't know that I could have foreseen the Palantir of Orthanc, but if my opponent early on in the turn, when I have two wills of the West showing, plays Saruman, I can assume, well, maybe there's some reason that, that Saruman is getting into play. Um, now, one thing to be clear, because of the action tokens, I would be able to get Gandalf by the end of the round anyway if my opponent gets Saruman because the action tokens let the free people take the last action of the round. So that's something to be said. It, it doesn't give away quite as much information given that I had action tokens. Nonetheless, at this point, I'm thinking, wow, I wish I had moved because if I know if it's a safe movement or if I'm getting hit, that will impact how I feel about spending my other Will of the West. So in the end, I decide to spend a Will of the West right now to get rid of the Palantir, thinking that on my first movement, I'm probably not going to get hit and therefore I'm not going to lose Gandalf. And so um, w one possibility if, if could have been move once, use a ring to move a second time, and then be able to get Gandalf turn two, which obviously is great to get Gandalf turn two, but I also don't want to let the Palantir sit out here. And at some point I'm going to want to use a Will of the West, so why not use it now? So that's my thinking. I'd, I'd be curious to hear people's comments on that. All right, the army continues marching north. I uh, get north close to war. My opponent draws a character card at this point. Previously he had drawn a shadow card. So... I mean, a strategy card. So I wonder, we're, we're a little bit all over the place. I, I think if I'm, if I'm going with shadow cards, um, especially if the fellowship has moved safely twice, maybe I would continue drawing strategy cards. Um, I go ahead and play Wisdom Bell around here, and, and that's got to be a little bit of a surprise because this is really letting me get, get the North to war. And because Sauron is not at war and my opponent doesn't have musters, yes, this does let my opponent get 
most likely get the Witch King next round, it will allow me to muster into Dale twice before this army comes. So I, I think that's that's a reasonable play. Reasonable play for me. Okay, so activate the north. I very rarely will play Wisdom of Elrond as the card effect because it's just often not that useful, and I think Confusion is pretty powerful. But here, it, it worked exactly as I wanted. I was able to activate a nation that otherwise wouldn't have been able to get to war, and then I was able to also, on top of that, draw an extra card, which was Thranduil. So this is just a perfect redraw, right? This army is coming up north. I love, I love to see this card. Okay, so Gandalf the Guide is doing his job. All right, we have an army uh, ready to go in Umbar. Obviously, I'm worried about Gondor. Gondor's not at war. Maybe I can get them to war before the Easterlings are at war, maybe. Um, and then, of course, I move. And I think it makes sense to use my last action to move so that if I get hit, which is unlikely, but if I get hit, that I'll have the chance to hide again. All right, but I do get missed. All right, um, so we can see my opponent has... A variety of choices. I think probably the Lissai is the right choice to get rid of. Yeah, and that's what they discard. And I draw Fearfire Foes, obviously a little late now that I've managed to get the North to war anyway, but Shield Wall is still a perfectly good effect. And now I have Dead Men of Dunharrow, Gwahir, and the Grey Company. And I'm at three movement. So if I can get two movement, or really, I don't know if I need any. So I'm just counting, if I play Gwahir right now, how far can I get Strider? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can get I can get all the way into into Rohan easily, into Westham Net, into Helm's Deep, and then I can play Dead Men of Dunharrow into Polar Gear, and then and then Crown Aragorn, get a nice muster in Polar Gear, and that's great. Before the Southrons and Easterlings are at war. So hopefully at this point I'm gonna draw i I'm gonna roll some Another Will of the West or uh, some uh, some uh, Palantirs would be perfectly fine with me here. So my opponent, it says allocates three eyes, but intended to allocate two. So my opponent allocates two eyes and then rolls no additional ones and gets two musters. And I have um, a fairly boring roll there. I wish that I had gotten a Palantir. Um, the musters, the musters are good, actually, because I can muster into Dale, which is what I wanted. But I don't have any army movement to get them into Woodland Realm, and I also don't have Palantirs or um, Wills of the West to be able to crown Aragorn. But still, th this, this is actually, I shouldn't really complain about this role. This is a perfectly fine role. I, I wanted to get musters, and I did. So start by mustering into Dale. That way, even if my opponent uses their first action to get Sauron to war, I still will be able to muster a second time. And, that, and at that point, that's a pretty sizable force. All right, so they get Sauron to war, and then I get a, a decent army into Dale here. And now, of course, they get the Witch King. That makes sense. I'm not sure why the Witch King goes here into Minus Morgul. Um, that's... Strange. I mean, maybe they're shifting the attack to Gondor. I think I would be more inclined to just put it up here with this army if this is the army that's doing the attacking. Because then they use a character die to move Nazgul. And I don't I don't really love that. Why did... Does this army really... Is that the right place for it? Maybe. I could have had three leadership here. I mean, obviously five leadership is better than three. But... What's the plan? Okay, so they attack into Dale. I think that makes sense. All right, so so maybe all in all, it makes sense. I want to get my full contingent. I don't know. What, what else is this army, this Nazgul doing? I might put the Nazgul there in case I draw any of the cards that have me. Yeah, like they are terrible. I mean, I'm probably not going to play they are terrible as a, um, as a combat effect, but... Um, you know, breaking of the fellowship, I could definitely play this. So I would, I would have gone ahead and put a sixth one there. If I need a character die to move this army around, I can, I can probably just muster it there if I need to. All right. So they play a strategy card, great host, obviously good. And I get two hits. The Dale army survives with three hit points left. Now I did have a choice. I could have kept an elite and a regular, and then maybe retreated into Erebor, baiting the attack onto Woodland Realm. But instead, I go, I go into Woodland Realm, 
And this is a pretty sizable army, uh, and I still have Thrandall's archers waiting. So I don't know, maybe it makes sense to have had only two units in there and then play Thrandall's archers in advance. But this way I'm planning on getting to um, muster it later. But I don't know, thinking about that more, I, maybe it makes, if I'm going to retreat and I have Thrandall's archers in hand, it probably makes sense to have just done an elite and a regular and then I would have had three elites in in this um, in this siege in advance. So I think that's better. That's probably better. All right, and we can see this one Gondor unit down here. You know, I moved this guy here. Maybe that caused this whole chain of events that sent this army up north instead of staying down here in Gondor. But it meant that this little regular in Iron Hills is not going to make it in because my opponents can be able to besiege Erebor before I have a chance to move that army unit in. All right. So, of course, I moved the Fellowship and they get hit this time, which seems fair given that I've moved so many times, and a three. So, of course, Gandalf says, this is my exit and Strider is guide. So w my opponent still attacks Woodland Realm here. And I, I, I think this is, uh, this is clearly a mistake. Uh, well, maybe not clearly a mistake, but I don't understand this because this army can't get bigger right now. The elves are not at war. So it's not like I can muster into Woodland Realm. And I think what you want to do is uh, besiege Erebor before this regular gets in. I mean, maybe I'm going to spend time moving back, moving these, moving these three Dale units back into Dale, if I if if Shadow vacates it into Erebor. But I guess I guess the point is, okay, maybe you don't want to attack into Erebor. I can see some argument for that. But then certainly, why aren't you? Why are you bothering to make this attack? That, that's that's the thing that doesn't really make sense to me. So. Yeah, I don't know. Are there other are other things that I can be playing that are useful right here? Um, I mean, the Southrons and Easterlings are not at war, so these armies can't come in yet. Yeah, it's it's a good point. There aren't that many useful things. Um, maybe what I maybe what I do is I play Orcs multiplying again, and then since I did actually fairly cleverly uh, leave this. Uh, Nazgul here, I can just start moving again and move this army up and I can really just take out Karak and then really focus on Woodland Realm and not worry about this one extra regular getting into Erebor. So maybe maybe that's an idea. All right, so in this case, I I don't know what what good that does other than giving free a, a, a free muster of the elves, but maybe, you know, maybe... All right, how about this? Now, I'm, I'm seeing it now. How about this? We have shadow lengthens. So I guess that's the plan. That makes a lot of sense now. So we're going to take out Woodland Realm after all. We're going to play shadow lengthens to get this army up to here pretty quickly. But I can't quite do it this turn. So, okay. That's 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 not not, not an unreasonable plan. Um, okay. So at this point... This is, this is a great pause the video moment. So going back to the perspective of the free people, what do we do with this extra character die? We have one character die left. I've already moved once. If I move a second time, there's some chances, reasonable chances that I'm going to get caught. And then reasonable chances if I do get caught of getting revealed. Here's the hunt pool right now. It is uh, 15 tiles and uh, I guess nine of those... 15 tiles are reveals. So the things that I was considering, one was moving and the other was separating separating Strider and getting Strider to be ready in Rohan so that next turn I can play uh, Dead Men of Dunharrow and then crown him in Pelargir. Now, the problem with that plan is I'm already missing a Will of the West for Gandalf. So I would really like a Will of the West next turn. The odds of me getting two Wills of the West next turn on four dice are pretty low. So so that's why in the end I decided to move. Um, and unfortunately for me, I did get caught and it was a reveal 
And I, um, because the fellowship was generally doing pretty well, I decided to go through uh, Moria and get revealed in Parth Celebrant and then get a zero reveal for the extra tile. So, you know, it's nice to have those zero reveals or really any reveal happen while you're already revealed. But um, yeah, so so that could have been, certainly could have been a lot worse going going through Moria. All right, I just took the one corruption because I didn't want to risk losing Strider to a random um, random companion. All right, so next... Oh, right, and my opponent gets one more action. They play uh, Orcs Multiplying again. So getting prepared to move this army up there makes sense. All right, I have one too many cards. I think I end up discarding the Grey Company because I think I'm not going to make it to Minas Tirith anytime soon. Um, and I'm happy if I'm revealed to, to be able to use Strider's Guide ability, so that's good. All right, so my opponent gets a bazillion musters, um, definitely putting the South Rons and Easterlings to war and probably getting Rohan mustered up a bit. So, um, And then I roll a bunch of Palantirs and still no Will of the West. So, so obviously I'm feeling a little sad about that and would like to get Gandalf, but I can't. And... I'm just going to have potentially some problems with my, my Palantirs. But I can start by hiding the Fellowship. So I hide the Fellowship, and then my opponent, seeing me hide, plays a very reasonable card, which is Felthing. So one of the strategies you want to do is better to play these Hunt cards when, you're, when the Fellowship is hidden so that if you happen to get lucky and get any of these four tiles, the, the zero reveal, the one reveal, the one reveal, or the two reveal, then they'll be revealed in addition to the cost of, um, you know, whatever corruption you cause. And for a foul thing, the kind of tile that you want to draw is a one. If you draw a zero, they don't have to lose a random companion. But foul thing requires you to deal with... Um, it says, except that the free people's player must reduce hunt damage, if any, by eliminating a random companion. Um, so what that means is when you play Foul Thing, the, the tile that you really want to draw is a one. Because now, if I get Strider, then basically I'm losing Strider to a one. Or if, I'm, if I get Gimli or Legolas or Boromir, um, you're basically getting a value of two corruption for a tile of one. And um, in the end, I draw Strider. So so this is this is really puts me on tilt a bit because I had I had a great plan after after hiding with the with using Strider's ability, I was gonna move with I was gonna move once and assuming I didn't get revealed, then I was gonna use one Palantir to play Guahir to separate Strider, and then I was gonna play another Palantir to play Dead Men of Dunharrow. And then I would be in position and I'd have a nice muster and it would be it'd be great. It'd be great. So now Strider is permanently gone and lost to a one tile. So the odds of that happening are quite low. My opponent needed to have drawn Foul Thing in the top five cards, drawn a tile that actually inflicts corruption damage and there are a good number of those, but you know there there were three eyes and a zero, which would have not caused a random companion loss at all, and then had a one out of six chance on top of all of that to to draw Strider. So I'm just like, oh my gosh, I can't I can't believe that that was not that you know now dead men have done Harrow is useless, and I'm never gonna have six dice this whole game. So definitely, I think. Um, a shadow, you're just like, ah, oh, that's so great, right? That's exactly that's exactly what you want. A shadow, it's like the perfect play. The only thing that could have been better if it had been a reveal on top of that, that would have been really insult to injury. But um, in the end, it did not reveal me, but it did get Strider, which is a great great catch by the foul thing. Um, and so at this point, I go ahead and move because I'm like, well, I gotta I guess I gotta keep going with the fellowship, and um, I get missed. So. Okay, now um, Shadow's actions are pretty uh, reasonable here. We muster up, muster up, muster, a bunch of good mustering for the South Rounds and Easterlings. Um, we get some Wargs uh, and Orthanc, and then at this point I play Power Too Great. I don't think that that much is happening. 
around the elves, but you know, what else am I going to play? That it doesn't seem, doesn't seem crazy. And this is a point where if I had, um, had an extra regular, sorry, if I had only put in, um, four units instead of five units into Woodland Realm, I would now be able to play Thranduil's in a useful way. But now I'm like, ah, do I really want to play it just for a single, just for a single elite? Like not against this army. I don't think, I don't think it makes that much sense. All right. So I play power to great. And then there's more mustering. And then this is, I, I think about drawing a card, but actually it's better to save a tile for when you're trying to get into Mordor to see what's happening with Cruel Weather. And um, in the end, I decide to play Mithril Coat and Sting, which is a little risky because it's a very powerful card, but it can go away with Nazgul Strike or with Worn With Sorrow and Toil. Now, Worn With Sorrow and Toil can get it anyway from your hand. Um, so against Worn With Sorrow and Toil, sometimes it's better to just play it. And um, so I play it here. I don't really have anything else that I'm super excited to play right now. So that's what I do. And I'm feeling I'm like, okay, there's not that much corruption for the fellowship. Like I'm just going to trudge on and hope, hope to make steady progress before there's too much shadow military going on. All right, Black Captain Commands is great, and then they end up repositioning this army to bring it up and and take care of um, take care of the the dwarves. I mean, yeah. So probably this is coming in for the dwarves. Now, one one thing that I wonder about is we we mustered up this army. Now it's just sitting there. Um, we did have Shadow Lengthens, so why not why not try and take out Woodland Realm? Um, while I have all the leadership there and, you know, I could have just moved from Dol Guldur right into Narrows of the Forest and then been, been set up for next round. The other thing is those, the, the cards that let you basically make an attack using a card effect, like, um, the Black Captain Commands, I really like saving those to use with a Palantir because it lets you basically get an extra attack. On average as Shadow, you're gonna draw, you're gonna roll about half. Half of your dice are gonna be attacks, either a character or an army or an army muster. So on average, if you can be making more attacks in a round or more attacks overall, that often serves you well. So that's why I like to save those cards for when when I actually need them as a Palantir. Also, it's a little bit of a surprise to the free people. I mean, they might be expecting it, but you know, it's not guaranteed. If you see a character sitting out there, then you know they, they can attack. Um, the other thing is with those extra musters, maybe it would have made sense to muster up two more Nazgul instead of these, these two wargs um, because I am at one movement. So we know that this, this, uh, the fellowship can declare, but if I had had two more Nazgul, I could put one in Eastern net and one in Western Brownlands as well. And then, you know, that's that now, now the fellowship would be, um, hunted no matter what by a Nazgul. All right. So I draw Athelos and I'm like, Oh, Athelos, right after I lost Strider though, to be fair, had I not lost Strider to Foul Thing, I would have separated him with Gua here and moved him down to Plargear. So Athelos wouldn't have been used by Strider either way, but it did feel a little bit like an extra taunt. And I was like, oh, so so tilted by losing him uh, to a one. All right. Um, so allocates um, one eye. Uh, and then I'm like, wait a second, I, I declare, just so you know. and Or sorry, uh, my opponent allocates two eyes. I'm like, wait a second, I declare. And then my opponent decides to allocate only one eye, which is which is a little strange to me because I think if you were willing to allocate two eyes when you had a reroll, then it's it would be even better to allocate two eyes when you don't have a reroll because the 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 extra value of any additional die in the hunt decreases um you have so for instance uh, imagine you had a million dice and then you're like well what if i get one more now i'll have a million and one well you're probably going to already roll a six at least one six if you have a million dice to roll so like that extra million one die is not worth it um it doesn't really help and obviously that that's 
there are smaller numbers, but the same principle applies. If you wanted to put two eyes in when you had a reroll, which is effectively three dice, then it's even better to have two dice. I mean, it, you're getting more value for that die that you're putting in when you don't have a reroll as opposed to when you do have a reroll. Now, it changes it slightly if you have two rerolls, but in this case, you only had one reroll. So, okay. Um, so my opponent ends up rolling two eyes and gets a whole bunch of Palantirs, and I have sort of average movement, right? I, I still haven't rolled uh, Will of the West. I'm like, where's Gandalf? He's, he's definitely late. And um, all right, so I go ahead and uh, move, I'm assuming. Yeah, so I move, and my opponent misses, and then they, they play Flocks of Curbain. Now, you know, that's a card that I think it just doesn't add that much value. I mean, I do see that we have Breaking of the Fellowship, so maybe you want to, but I think I would be, given that I only had five um, cards and I had four Palantirs, I, I think I would be more inclined to draw a character card. Maybe I'll get something that's a little more impactful than Flocks of Cobain. I think the odds of revealing me if I move again this turn are pretty high. Maybe you save Flocks of Cobain for revealing me into Mordor. All right, so now they draw a card, and again, I just I think that's the wrong order. I would I would I would draw first before playing, unless you're worried about using Flocks of Curbane on the next roll. But wh why would you use it? I, it doesn't to me the value on the next roll is is pretty low if I'm moving this turn because you're probably going to hit me already. You really want to use it on a round most likely when you when you're rolling sixes and you have a lot of eyes. All right, so I pass, and my opponent starts to get these armies together. Now, the other thing is I noticed the card draw was a strategy card. So I feel like, yeah, there is some benefit to having a balanced a balanced card strategy, but given that the Fellowship is out in the middle, you manage to get, you know, pretty lucky. Not, yeah, I mean, reasonably lucky to, to hit Strider now that Strider's gone. Any reveal really slows down the Fellowship, and... The free people only have four dice. I, this is a situation where I'd really want to be drawing more character cards to to just keep the fellowship under pressure. So, all right, but they drew a strategy card, um, and then they and then they moved armies. I I'm not really sure. I feel like they're they're a little bit all over the place. My inclination is well, I have I have these. Um, this army up here with the Witch King, why don't I, you know, finish off Erebor, maybe ideally before my opponent draws, draws Dane Ironfoot's guard, and my opponent still didn't draw, uh, roll any army movement, and so this regular is still sitting in Iron Hills. So you can potentially, if they don't, if my opponent doesn't play scouts, I can, I can attack into Iron Hills and get, pick off this regular, and then besiege Erebor with the measly three units in there. All right, so I move, and my opponent does use Flocks of Curbane. I think, you know, maybe they're trying to prevent the Declare into Minas Tirith, um, because if you get revealed, then you can't Declare into a Stronghold. But I think the incremental value of Flocks of Curbane here is pretty low, because the only way that Flocks of Curbane actually matters in this situation is if I don't roll any fives, and I do roll at least one four. That's what you're betting on when you use Flocks of Curbane. And, and when I say five, I mean five or six, five or higher. And so because you have don't roll at least one five or six and roll one four, those two probabilities combined are just pretty low. So that's why when I said you want to wait for a six, that's why you want to typically use it on the first movement of a turn because it is don't roll a six and roll at least one five. So... And obviously, if you catch the Fellowship moving into a stronghold, that tends to be more more impactful. All right. In the end, they rolled a five. So it didn't it didn't actually make a difference. Um, but they get a three. And I'm uh, thinking here about losing a random companion because maybe I want a hobbit showing up in Fangorn. Or maybe I just want to take take the corruption and, and efficiently as, as efficiently as possible. Um, so I end up just taking Gimli because I want to whittle the size of the fellowship down in an efficient manner. So 
um, shadow lengthens to get this army to here and this army to here to Dale. Okay, so makes sense. I guess we're still going after we're still going after the north. I just didn't see it coming in that way, and now I have a full force in Orthanc. All right, so my opponent was staying focused. I guess this army was just a little bit of a get in position. Maybe eventually we'll, we'll use this army to take Pilar gear if this army manages to go to Dol Amroth. So, yeah, all, all that's reasonable. I mean, the other thing to think about is maybe this army could be moving. I mean, the elves still are, well, the power too great. Yeah, so, yeah, maybe maybe, maybe power too great is making this, this attack unappealing. All right. So I go ahead and play Athelos. Expected is one, and I get one, so that's good. And my opponent draws another card here and gets um, New Power is Rising, obviously a great card. Um, but they managed to muster up pretty fully already, so maybe not as useful at this point. Um, and then I go ahead and get Gondor to war because I see that my opponent doesn't have Corsair, doesn't have a Palantir die and doesn't have a um, army die, and therefore I know that Corsairs of Umbar cannot happen this turn, and therefore at the start of next turn, I can muster um, in Dol Amroth before the Corsairs come crashing in, because I'm expecting that at any moment. Even though, as it turns out, my opponent doesn't doesn't actually have Corsairs of Umbar yet. All right, so my opponent attacks Erebor, and they go into Siege. So nice job getting Erebor under Siege with only three units, I think, is a great accomplishment for Shadow. That was that was well played, actually. Um, bringing this reinforcement army in, this, this army should be big enough to be able to defeat Erebor. All right, I draw, I will go alone, King Brand's men. At this point, I... What do I? What, what would you discard here among these? Um, I think probably Gua here. What else? Yeah. So that's what I discard, and then I I think about declaring into Minas Tirith um, because it heals one, it protects me from cruel weather. But I also think, well, I don't, I don't, I, I'm short on dice. I would like to keep making progress. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna. Go ahead and um, declare. Now, is this the right place for it? Yeah, probably. It's um, two spaces away from, from any of these armies, so they can't immediately attack. So that's why I do it. My opponent allocates one eye, rolls two more, and I get, yay, Gandalf shows up, so that's good. And at this point, I'm a little bit um, worried because I do want to use this muster to muster into Dol Amroth, and I obviously want to use this Will of the West to get Gandalf, and I also want to use these character dice to, to move the Fellowship before my opponent gets a Nazgul on them. Now, they didn't roll any uh, character dice, and they don't have a ring, so it might be a little bit tricky to get a character, uh, a Nazgul, onto the Fellowship. So the most important thing I decide is Gandalf, so um, I get Gandalf, and I think about where to put him. I could put him in Woodland Realm. Um, you know, that does make Ents less active unless I get a companion there, but I don't actually have any Ents. So um, I decide to put him, put Gandalf in Woodland Realm, which is something I don't do very often. But um, in this situation, particularly with Thrandall's archers in my hand, I, I, I feel like it's going to help this um, stronghold really survive. All right, and now my opponent plays Warren with Sauron and Toil. So obviously that's not great, but um, what could I have done? And I say Minas Tirith. I, had the Fellowship been in Minas Tirith, um, this, the timing for this might, might not have worked as well. You might have still played it, but in any case, so be it. I'm going to lose a couple of cards. I really don't want to lose Mithril Coat and Sting, um, but that might be the way it goes. All right, so my opponent misses on the first move, um, attacks into Erebor, and makes some makes some reasonably good good progress there, and um, and then and then presses makes sense, and deadly strife manages to take out the dwarves. So that's that's pretty good. Now the dwarves should be at war here, and um, 
We just missed it. Now, would I have moved or would I have mustered in Iron Hills or would I have mustered in Dol Amroth? I don't, I don't know. I think Iron Hills is a lost cause. So, um, I think, I think Dol Amroth is sort of more critical, but given that my opponent has not played Corsairs of Umbar yet, I kind of feel like they probably don't have it. So I have maybe a little time. They did, I think, cycle one card. So I move, the Fellowship gets revealed anyway, moving into um, Minus Morgul. And now I'm sort of, I'm a little bit happy with that because I, um, I can't be hit by Cruel Weather. So I don't know, did my opponent actually have Cruel Weather? No, they didn't actually have Cruel Weather, so. All right, and we get an eye on the extra Stronghold tile, and um, my opponent doesn't play Breaking of the Fellowship, which I don't know, like, why why not? You could potentially get, get some companions. Like, this this three is worth four. Um I guess with Worn with Sorrow and Toil, you don't want them to be separating. You wanna you want them to be lost. Um, all right. So my opponent um, attacks the Fords of Eisen, which is I think nice timing, um, uh, because Gandalf is up here. So this this is one of the consequences: the fact that I put Gandalf up here and there's no companion in Fangorn, and my opponent knows there's no easy way to get a companion in Fangorn. Um, you know, now Orthanc is revealed. Is is you can bring the full might of Orthanc into this attack, and I played Daylight because normally I wouldn't do it, but I wish I'd had Scouts. But I wanted to make sure I got that leader, um, and ideally two units into Helm's Deep, and I go ahead and move these armies in. And I don't know what else this this army seems like. Sure, maybe you can do something. Um, new powers rising, and then. Shadows gather to, oh, sorry, attack Helm's Deep. And then I guess my opponent is saving Shadows Gather. So I know they have it, but that's fine. All right, I declare into Mordor. That makes sense. And then I think at the moment there's no red and no blue. So neither of us have drawn any red or blue. That my opponent just drew um, Cruel Weather that they couldn't have used it anyway. So Challenge of the King, just more and more and more of these... Uh, Strider cards. The deck was really the deck was really taunting me about that loss. Um, all right, so allocated one, rolled two, and then I got a whole bunch of characters, and maybe I wanted to put units into Dol Amroth because now I'm really thinking Corsairs are coming. Um, but if I think that my opponent is going to win next turn, then I'm happy to be trying to zoom along if possible. All right, so I hide first, and then um, my opponent gets the mouth, and my opponent's trying to figure out a way to get um, enough victory points this round, but I just I just don't think there's any way that's happening. Um, I move and start with a two, which is, which is perfect, and I decide to lose Legolas, and at this point we forget Worn with Sorrow and Toil. Now, it does say... If a companion is taken as a casualty, you may also discard one of the free peoples. So you don't have to. Now, I don't understand why you would ever choose not to, but um, you don't have to. And so in sort of more formal games, like a league game, people will often play like, well, if Shadow forgets, then Shadow forgets. Um, so, it, you know, I I don't know exactly what the etiquette is. Um you know, I think we realized it. Okay, next movement was a zero reveal. Um, I hide. My opponent is um, attacking into Asgiliath. And um, then I hide. And I think around now we remember about the... Um, about Warren of Sorrow and Toil, but it feels it feels a little, a little late. Um... And even against uh, five eyes, I get a one one reveal. So, you know, that's that's pretty good. Definitely good good luck on that one. I wasn't too worried about an eye, even five damage, 
because I would have used mithril coat and sting against that. And then even if I did, I would, and, and I drew a second eye, um, I can lose Boromir and two hobbits to get um, four corruption reduction. Um, and then I'd be with Gollum. So, you know, I, I think that would probably, even then probably would have been okay, but obviously a one reveal is uh, quite good. All right, so I get reveal. That's pretty standard. And then what we'd expect. And then my opponent allocates one eye, adds zero. And I get um, just enough to be able to make it with, um, with a ring. So I hide the fellowship. Oh, yeah, now we remember uh, Warren of Sauron Toil. So it's a, it's a whole next round. Um, I, I, you know, I think we... Um, it, it was probably correct to, to not do it. It would have probably changed things a lot to, to do it now. All right. Um, Denethor's Folly, sure. I mean, you want to make sure you get to 10 this round if you can. I, I think this Helm's Deep attack probably is okay, especially with fighting Urukai. Um, Minas Tirith, yeah, what else am I going to do with that Palantir? So, sure. Um, I do have Ringwraiths are abroad, so there, there are some chances for, for Shadow to be able to do it. And now we have, there's also Shadow's Gather um, to just teleport this army right up there. So, and then the Mouth, the Mouth of Sauron is great against Gandalf because he can't cancel that. So, you know, I, I don't know, is it worth it to play Denethor's Folly? Maybe, maybe. All right, and now this, I do something interesting, which is I play I Will Go Alone here. Um, and the reason why I do that, so Boromir is normally worth two corruption. Um, if you use him on I Will Go Alone, he's only worth one. So I'm kind of effectively losing one corruption, but I'm not so worried about corruption. All I'm worried about is destroying the ring because I have, I'm, I'm nowhere close. There are no red tiles in here. My opponent doesn't seem to be focusing on red tiles. So all I'm worried about is this two reveal. I can't do anything about these four eyes, but this two reveal, I can turn into a not reveal because if I manage to get revealed on my next move, I'm not going to have enough actions, even with a ring to destroy, to destroy the one ring this turn. So my thinking is if I get rid of Boromir, then I'll have two hobbits left. Each of them can separate in order using their guide ability. And then Gollum will be guide. And then this two will not be a reveal. And so, you know, it, right now there's three out of five tiles that let me win this turn. And with this tile changing from a bad tile to a good tile, then it's 50-50. And really, because I have Mithril Coat and Sting, because we for, forgot Warm of Sorrow and Toil, um, I actually have much better than that because I have a 50% chance of getting it right in the first place. And then if a bad tile, an eye, comes up, I can use Mithril Coat and Sting, and then I'll have another even better than 50% chance. So it's a little more than 75% chance that um, if I move, by, if I move, then I'm not going to get revealed. So my opponent um, attacks into Pilar gear. That's fine. I'm not, at this point, really, they can't really do much to stop the military thing and just maybe hopefully get lucky in combat, but otherwise just continue to move the ring. And... So my opponent draws the two reveal. So that was, um, I felt proud about that because I really played specifically against that tile. It flipped a tile from bad to good and um, I ended up drawing it. So it doesn't matter now. The game is, the game is over at this point because, um, unless my opponent plays a red tile, because there's nothing they can, or re reveals the fellowship, but there's literally no tile that they can draw right now that reveals the fellowship, even if they have like Isildur's Bane or something like that. Um, it's just none of these reveal the fellowship. There's none left. So, and eyes don't work on those like Orc Patrol or Isildur's Bane. So um, yeah, this is guaranteed victory for a fellowship at this point. And I'm glad that it turns out Mithril Code Instinct didn't even matter because um, we just drew this tile. So that, that was sort of a nice vindication. Sometimes the, um, the rules, mistakes, um, or missed opportunities balance out in the end.
Um, and then I think there was one one attack maybe, and then um, the ring was destroyed. So it was a. I thought that was an interesting game. I really appreciated the um, the perseverance of the fellowship. Obviously, they had a pretty nice run up Mordor, but um, corruption was never really that that much of an issue. Um, even if you know, the, instead of getting the ones and the twos, if there had been you know higher values, twos or threes, it, it still would have been fine on the fellowship. Um, so let's look at let's look at some stats. So remember, in a replay, I think. Yeah, no, I guess I guess this is correct. So my opponent was plus four on sixes, but didn't roll that many dice. Um, allocated um, eleven eyes over eight turns. Okay, pretty balanced. You know, this is this is all just reasonably average stuff. Nothing too crazy. Waited a long time for Gandalf, but um, did have some wills earlier and and later in the game. So that was the game. If you have any suggestions um, for other games I should check out or any comments, I'd love to please, please leave them in the comments below and I'll leave a link to the game log as well and hope you have a good day. Thanks.